If you think about all of the irrigation structures that the early pioneers built when they first came to Utah, I think they recognized that water was a scarce resource from the get-go. As the climatologist, I'm responsible for keeping the climate records for the state. And we've been collecting since 1956 here. Up on campus, we've been collecting data for over 100 years. Here at the wastewater treatment plant, our project is to evaluate how well do the treatment plants remove pharmaceuticals and microbial contamination, making sure the people that might get exposed are not exposed to excessive risk. Water bases in Utah are over allocated. We're looking at water banking other places and the keys to their success. Water banks have to fulfill a particular purpose and meet a particular need and those vary across the state. The quality of air that we can have here in Utah can impact your health. We need cars, we need industry, but let's make sure that they don't damage our environment and damage our health. Ammonia plays an important role in driving our high particulate levels that we see during the winter. So we have these sensors deployed at 40 different locations. Once we identify where ammonia is coming from, we can use that information to inform policy. We're really at the north end of the area of the Uinta Basin with the most industry development. We measure ozone, we measure oxides of nitrogen, particulate matter, and really our group's mission is to do research that helps industry and regulators make good decisions. The work Utah State and Weber State did together is to educate drivers. We can plot out and see when the car was cold, the catalytic converter didn't work, so the emissions were high. And then when the cat got heated up, the emissions dropped. The goal is to reduce the time between cold and normal operating temperature. We are growing rapidly and, and it really changes the footprint of our urban activities on the land and those things have consequences. 40 to 45 percent of the entire population of the state lives in four counties. So all this pressure for more outdoor recreation experiences is right there on the wildland urban interface and what we're doing is trying to identify where are those areas that are, aren't, currently aren't used and how can we actually start to disperse use away from those high concentration areas that are starting to experience high levels of crowding. Think of Monroe Mountain. Aspen trees have been disappearing till now they are only about a third of the landscape that they occupied historically. So by serving as important science and social intermediaries, we're able to achieve a level of trust and legitimacy that quite frankly the federal agencies couldn't have. I always say that these prime ag land fields grow great houses, but you can't go backward. And so we've, we've gobbled up a lot of the prime ag land and, and forced agriculture to the sort of marginalized perimeters. Our job and, and role as designers and planners is to create examples of environmentally sensitive, low impact development that's pleasing to live in, that, that gives people a quality of life that they're excited about.